Hello again, everyone. I'm Bob Colt, and we're continuing our conversations in the Lansing School District. And my honor to have my friend, the honorable former mayor of Lansing, David Hollister, here. David, you're very involved in community activities still, and you played a pretty major role in the bond committee for the school district. I want you to talk a little bit about that process because a lot of people don't know um, that you've had a lot of experience with the school district, even as mayor, and have seen several of these bond proposals <clears throat> come and go. But now this is kind of a unique opportunity this year, isn't it? It is special. Um, I really appreciated the uh, the uh, engaged uh, community that developed this proposal. This was not somebody pulling something off the shelf and saying, here's what we're going to do it. Um, it was a it was a participatory process. I served on the committee. Uh, there were several forums, and I, the, the superintendent was very strategic in tying it to a, a, a curriculum uh, restructuring and a pathway for kids. A pathway for kids, and this is something I've been arguing for years that if uh, we've got to have these kids coming to our schools with the skills necessary to compete in this international and technological economy. And so um, I had been engaged as mayor with multiple initiatives with the school district. Maybe we had 38 or 40 initiatives. I worked on a couple of millage campaigns, the one we lost and the one we won. Uh, but this one is fundamentally restructuring how the uh, district is going to function. And so you take your child and you decide which community you're going to, neighborhood you're going to live in. But more than importantly, you decide, do you, is your youngster interested in the arts? Is he interested in science? Is he interested in whatever? And then you have a pathway through the elementary school to the middle school to the high school that are going to specialize and they're going to reinforce one another. So if you're interested in the performing arts, for example, you'd articulate up to Everett through a series. You could go from any place in the system, but there'll be a, a channel from day one as you enroll your child, wherever they start, would, would, would be in that career pathway. Uh, Eastern would be um, um, healthcare and uh, international relations uh, um, section. I'm not remembered what it, what it is, but there's a specialty. Yeah. And uh, this is aligns then the middle schools and the uh, in the elementary schools with the high schools, and so you can still graduate and be a Quaker. You can graduate and be a a big red or a Viking. Um, so we were able to maintain the kind of the framework of the schools, uh, but end up with a new facility for Eastern High School, which is, it was old when I was there, and I was teaching there in the 70s. That's right, you were a teacher for many years. At Eastern? Yeah. And my kids all went to Eastern. So I have a real uh, you know, affinity and, and a love for, for Eastern, but I could no longer justify maintaining it and trying to repair it when it costs more to repair than to uh, replace, and uh, then you'd have an old patched up building without the amenities that are so important in this uh, new economy. So uh, the Patton Gale would become the new Eastern, and then the kids that are at Patton Gale would go over to Fairview, and that would be upgraded. And that's the whole strategy here. The um, east side uh, gets a major investment, but the whole city would benefit by upgrades in, uh, in facilities and by adopting this new uh, strategy of uh, aligning the curriculum and specializing and uh, and then having your been able being able to track your students over over time as they uh, articulated through the schools I want to talk about your work with the committee because not only did you sort of help shape the Lansing pathway promise, bond, but there seem to be very diverse members from the community coming in, all coming to a consensus on a plan. 
And that's kind of unique. In your term as mayor, you didn't see that very often. No, but it's a model we've developed uh, and have practiced, uh, you know, as mayor and in different roles. We're doing that with the mayor now, trying to bring diverse people together and figure out how to solve legacy cost for the city. So, uh, you know, you have to be committed to the process and uh, transparency and participation and diversity. Win-win, you know, we had a lot of fun at win-win. Uh, but it's, it's exactly what you shoot for. And uh, I thought the superintendent was very strategic in uh, being personally engaged as well, uh, but also continuing to focus on win-win, yeah. continuing to focus on how this reinforces the pathway. And whenever we got diverted by whether the football field is going to be on the east end of the <laughs> land or the south end of the land or some of those issues, I uh, kept focusing on the big picture and on the strategic plan. And, uh, of course, it was easy for me to reinforce that uh, advocacy by the superintendent um, because of my own personal history as a teacher and a, a parent. All my three kids went to the Lansing schools. And then as mayor, we were deeply involved. So uh, it just gives me a nice feel that this is one I think we got a real shot at. So. We had talked uh, in a conversation with Chris Swope, the city clerk, who handles elections, and he made a comment that he would expect in this special bond election for there to be a small turnout of eight to 12,000, possibly at the high end votes, and that as many as 50% could be absentee ballots. If you think about that, absentee voters are usually senior citizens, how would you sort of convince a senior that investing in young people and schools is good for them, good for their property values, good for the city? What, what do you say? What's the pitch to seniors? Grandkids. Yeah, they love their grandkids. That's it. <laughs> they love their, their family and their grandkids. Yeah, they're the very poor. Yeah. You know, if they don't have grandkids, they know people who do. Their best friends or the associates they hang out with. And they want to see this next generation. They know the challenges whether they're the drugs and, you know, the, um, that are permeate the communities or poverty or whatever, but um, they, they want to see these kids make it. And uh, they're willing to pay if they believe in the program. And I think you've got credible people who made up this, uh, this committee, including Alfreda Smith. Yeah. You know, Alfreda and I banged heads when I was mayor. Uh, uh, because she saw me as a wild-eyed liberal, you know, going to spend the city into bankruptcy. And uh, we grew to, you know, know each other and trust each other. And um, But she was uh, on board as well. I mean, so it wasn't a stacked committee with uh, just a bunch of people who agreed with the strategy. It was a very diverse community, uh, committee, and a consensus was developed. And uh, I think the seniors will listen to Alfreda. Yeah. And they'll listen... Uh, uh, to their neighbors, and um, they know you've got to invest. I mean, they, they're where they are today because they, they made strategic decisions along the way. And uh, when you learn the story, and with the, exp the expiration of these old millages so that you're not asking for a big increase, you're asking to, for a very minuscule I increase to just continue what the tax was in the past, is this going to be dedicated to this new strategy? It should be an easy be vote. New. Easy vote. It should be an easy vote for people to continue a millage that will be expiring and existing, right. and in the context of a dime a day. Right. It the the numbers right. really work out in in a position to move forward with a bond proposal. One of the things that I think was really important with the the pending bond was that the strategic investment in most all buildings, as opposed to building one new high school, for right. instance. Talk a little bit about that in the decision-making process. I personally came at this wanting a new building. Yeah. Uh, as mayor, I had a chance to travel across the state and across the country and to see some of the facilities in our suburban schools in Okemos or St. John's or wherever and to see the facilities that were old when I was there, you know, 40 years ago, teaching, and they're, they're, to repair them would be a, a travesty. So I, I, I uh, 
I just lost my train of thought. Well, you 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 came in initially with that one. Oh yeah, I, concept, I, I was. But, but but the consensus at the end was we can make a lot of investments because we need to create the pathway. We don't really want to be asking people for more tax money. We want to make a good investment. And you were one of many who thought this was a good strategy. I was convinced. Uh, I came in with a, supporting a, a single new high school, but I, I became convinced that that would be emotionally hard for the community. People are so attached to the Quaker label or the big red label or the, uh, you know, Never Vikings. Vikings yep, yeah. Vikings. So why, uh, you know, why create a fight when, uh, when the, f the current buildings are strategically located around the city, where would you put a single high school? I know what I had recommended, but you got two losers in and, and, and the city, or three wards would be losing and one would be winning. This way, everybody in the community gets investment, and it's tied to a curriculum restructuring, and it's aligned with you know math and science and technology and it's just it's just a modern approach, and it's keeping the best of the old um, with a with a an influx of new f funding to have the best technology, um, the best curriculum, the best labs, um, and facilities that make you proud when you show up uh, to a, a activity at the yeah. High school or, or middle school. These are these are things that we can compare to the other communities around and say, "Come on in, we got an international baccalaureate program for God's sakes." This is one of the few in, in Mid Michigan that has it, and uh, that's that's an extraordinary curriculum. People, people should be beating the doors down. Yeah. But because of this image they have of these old, you know, rundown, you know, facilities. Uh, I think this is the beginning of a new a new uh, era. And a new uh, uh, re-imaging and re, uh, uh, re, re redefining uh, the Lansing School District. I'm really excited about it. Very proud to be part of it. Yeah. So th there will be a lot to do in the future. First, look at the bond vote. But um, the sale of Eastern to Sparrow was uh, part of the plan moving forward, and then creating all these pathways for education is really revolutionary. It can be done in an atmosphere with the Lansing School District having a surplus, being well managed. The city has a financial health team. A lot of school districts will have legacy costs when the accounting books change, but Lansing is not a city of Detroit. Uh, school district. No. And I think that's something you and others talked about and experienced. We're in much better shape to make this investment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's just sad to me that there's not a better understanding and appreciation of the quality education that a young person can get by participating in the Lansing School District. It's second to none. It's second to none. My kids all went on to... Um, from Eastern to uh, go to, uh, I lost two of them to the U of M. Uh, I kept one at MSU. They become engineers or scientists. Yeah. Uh, they got the best scholarships. And, I mean, if you apply yourself, um, the curriculum, the staff, uh, even with these old outdated buildings, they do a remarkable job. And I, I just wish people would spend more time looking at the reality and instead of, um, uh, some stereotype of what goes on in the schools. It's remarkable what goes on. There's improvements that need to be made, but this uh, aligning the, the, the curriculum and having this career pathway and tying it to real life experiences and getting the business community more involved in experiential learning and internships and all the pieces that come, come with this package, uh, it, it really makes one excited about the future. Can you imagine what would have happened if this happened when you were mayor? It would have made your life a lot easier, wouldn't it? Yeah, one of my biggest challenges. I figure I spent at least 20 to 25 percent of my time on the schools. As mayor, I tutored in the schools one day a week uh, with one child for a year. We, we would adopt them, and we were looking at third grade reading levels. And that was a very uh, 
powerful experience for me. And at one point, we had 1,100 volunteers uh, through the class uh, program, the Commission for Lansing School of Success. And we had a full-time staff. We were housed at the chamber. Um, we had the business community involved. And, and yet we couldn't get a millage passed. Yeah. Couldn't get a millage passed. And that was uh, one of the more frustrating parts of the job. Um, but I'm enthusiastic about this superintendent who is um, really tuned into the community, uh, really uh, very uh, engaging, very uh, open to uh, dialogue and, and changing and modifying the program. Um, I saw it evolve, uh, involved in my own mind. I came in with a preconceived notion of what I wanted, but was convinced to, to, uh, to uh, change the, my thinking on that. Um, and I'm, I'm really, I think this is the best shot we've had in probably 50 years. And uh, I think we got a good shot at it. And it really will change the face and future of Lansing, won't it? Yep. yep. It, it's, it, the mayor has to be worried that the cities and the schools' fate are tied together. Yeah. So whatever we can do as mayor or city council members or community members to see them both thrive, we need to do. Well, Dave Hollister, thank you for your comments. We appreciate everything you've done and participation on the bond committee in the Lansing School District. May 3rd is the vote. I'm Bob Colt. Thank you again for joining us. We'll continue our conversations in the Lansing School District.